uh, former uh, Muslim extremist and now anti-extremist educator, uh, Majid Nawaz with the Quilliam Foundation. Uh, Majid, I mean, there's so much we know, Majid, there's so much we know about how young people like him are radicalized, and yet it doesn't seem to have made much of a difference in, in terms of trying to prevent it. No, Anderson, you're right, it hasn't. And one of the reasons for that, unfortunately, is that though we are very good um, at sending across drones across the world or indeed um, taking out the leaders of al-Qaeda, what we aren't very good at, for various reasons, one of them is because uh, governments aren't particularly comfortable in having this discussion, is in, uh, is in stemming the flow uh, and the appeal of this ideology on the grassroots. I listened to your report earlier where one of your guests claimed that up to 5,000 French Muslims are being monitored for being potential jihadists. That's a, a huge, huge number. And if we look at that, uh, he said roughly 500 have gone from France to Syria. Uh, of course, it's around 500 from Britain as well, and that figure across Europe is 3,000. It tells you the scale of the problem. I think the challenge here is that we're dealing with a brand that appeals to young aspiring rappers like the uh, Kawachi brothers, uh, people that were appeared to be relatively integrated, but actually they're, uh, they're what, what appeals to them more than uh, the culture that the, these societies offer them is a perverted uh, Islamist violent brand. Um, and what we aren't very good at, what we still haven't got to grips with, is how to provide alternative messaging, how to uh, promote uh, alternative brands so that these young kids uh, go down a different path. There needs to be a European-wide civil society cooperation on that, and it still isn't there, unfortunately. In the United States, Christian, I think there's a, a greater integration of immigrant communities than there is in France and, and elsewhere and, and throughout Europe. Well, that's absolutely for sure. When you look at all the polls, when you look at all the social studies that have gone around American Muslims, they are much more integrated than they are in this part of the world. But I think, and, 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 and Majid and others have said, this goes beyond just alienated youth now. We've been hearing this story for a long, long time. And to what Majid was saying, there has been a lot of political correctness for many, many years now. We have all bent over backwards to be tolerant, to try to understand what's going on to try to separate the violent extremist nihilist uh, militants who use this kind of, of violence to, to get their way from the vast majority of Muslims but we do actually as a world have to figure out how to address what's going on now why is it that radical Islam is the vehicle for a rage against modernity against whatever political problem they seem to have why is it that it is being used and directed through radical Islam and I said earlier today that the words are Allah Akbar have become, because of these Muslim extremists, the most wicked words in our dictionary today. These are words that terrify people and for a very, very good reason. Imagine, it's interesting too, it's often these young men who, frankly, you know, don't have much religious background. They grew up, you know, I mean, they're maybe from, from families that, that are Muslim, but, but are not necessarily extremists themselves. They, you know, they were smoking pot, they want to be rappers, he, this young guy's dating, dating young women. Uh, and yet, within a very short period of time, he's planning on going over to Iraq to attack U.S. forces and now is, stands accused of, of being a suspect in this horrific terror attack. Yeah, and one of the reasons for that, Anderson, is that, uh, and I agree with everything Christiane just said, by the way, and I'm very happy to hear her say that, so thank you. One of the reasons for that, that they're not being religious and then suddenly becoming radicalized, is one thing that is consistent throughout Europe, and I don't think that many of us have yet come to comprehend the sheer scale of the problem that we're facing in Europe, and it takes shocks like this for, have the, for us to have these conversations. One of them is that uh, so many young uh, European born and raised Muslims primarily identify as Muslims only, or as Muslims primarily, and don't identify with their European societies, and vice versa, uh, many uh, continental European countries don't feel any sense of affinity to their minority communities, and uh, we see the rise of the far right across Europe. There's a severe and acute identity crisis playing out across Europe, and I worry because I think that there's a vacuum in the middle uh, and, and that vacuum uh, the far right are trying to fill, Islamist extremists are trying to fill. If uh, small L uh, classical liberals, people that stand for democratic pluralism and human rights, don't start aggressively asserting those values through a civil society led uh, or civil society led initiatives across Europe, uh, that vacuum unfortunately will be f uh, uh, filled by extremist organizations on all ends of the political spectrum. We've seen mosques being attacked in France in reprisal now. We've seen a kebab shop be uh, attacked and I worry for the future of Europe. It takes people to be brave, to stand forward, to not cow uh, and, and compromise, uh, bow down to 
the demands of extremists on all on both ends of the spectrum. And instead, I think yeah. we need to start redefining what it means to be European and to solve this identity crisis once and for all. Until we do, you're going to see more non-religious or irreligious young men choosing an identity for themselves.